Good day, I'm Alicia Sarendo, and today I'll be doing a some presentation regarding the progress of my research. To start, I'll be talking about the revision status and the progress report. <clears throat> so first, I'd like to address that the changes that I made in my paper were based on the comments and suggestions made by Ms. Camille and Ms. Ricolin, who were the panelists of my previous defense. Here are their comments and suggestions, as well as the revisions that I made as a response to them. First, I'll start with Ms. Camille's. She stated to, or she suggested, that I should revise my third research question, which was, what could be done to dispel diet culture's influence on people, specifically on young fit female women? As a response, I changed this research question into, what is the effectiveness of the produced or zine in the context of, in terms of altering people's perspective on diet culture? Next, um, she said to add more RLs on specific examples of diet magazines and how to counter it. Uh, as a response, I added art studies of the other diet magazines and women's magazines such as Candy, Vogue, Dove as a reference for the art production of the zine. Next, she said to know the target audience to know how to get their attention or a content analysis of the diet magazines. Although I did not do a content analysis, as I said earlier, I added um, art studies of magazines such as the mentioned earlier, uh, or women's magazines that specifically target six, uh, 16 to 20 year old young women. Next, she suggested or more RRLs regarding specific diet culture in the Philippines. And I did add uh, another uh, sub uh, topic talking about uh, body shaming culture here in the Philippines. Next, um, and the last but not the least, she suggested to reference feminist art movement framework design based on propaganda and uh, propaganda-led magazines. So here I added, as you can see, I added um, reference artworks of zines that are about um, feminism and they are talking about female empowerment and the issues that women face that are also regarding a female body and diet culture that uh, women experience. Next, uh, we'll be talking about Ms. Ricklin's comments. First, she suggested to uh, do an interview instead of a survey. And um, I did it. Uh, I changed it. And the primary participants for the interview are young women who are within the age range of 16 to 20 years old, which will also be discussed later. Next, she uh, said to define the term diet, which was lacking in my previous paper. And as a response, she added to the definition of terms. Next, she um, also said to add more artworks and make outputs different and unique with your reference. So as also stated earlier, um, as a response, I will add more uh, spreads that are about or the reference ad campaigns and uh, magazine layouts about a female body and diet dieting culture. Next, we'll be proceeding on to uh, data collection. So as I said, I did an interview, and this interview was conducted in a span of three weeks. Um, this was done in week eight to ten, uh, of the term two. I had eight interviewees: one sixteen-year-old, two seventeen-year-olds, three eighteen-year-olds, one nineteen-year-old, and one twenty-year-old. Um, next. Here are the interview questions I did for each interview. And the interview itself lasted to five to 10 minutes long. So for the results, 
As for the results, here's a brief summary of the combined responses. All of the interviewees have been familiar with and have done dieting. For them, dieting is done to lose weight for either aesthetic or health purposes. The reasons for dieting vary from stress, pressure from family members, or even from idols or role models. When they went on a diet, all of them changed their eating habits to be more careful and aware of what they consume. And they find dieting to be mentally and emotionally taxing since dieting is hard to consistently do and it affects their moods and emotions. Most of the experience of interviewees regarding dieting vary from being positive, neutral, and negative. When promoting dieting, all of the interviewees said that it should be promoted in the context of wanting to help someone improving or to improve their lifestyle to be healthier. Moreover, they said that other than promoting diets, we should also promote happier lifestyles and healthy relationships with food and our bodies. So for the submission of the academic journal, I will be or I plan on submitting my paper on the or for the research congress. So here are my reasons. So it is a prestigious event held by DSU and I thought it would be uh, interesting or it would be uh, a nice platform to uh, share the message of my paper and my artwork since it gives or it has a large audience where I can share um, my paper. Next, the theme. The theme of reaffirming the critical role of transformative research and knowledge production in the age of post-truth. It aligns with the a message that I have with my paper, which aims to dispel um the previous or the um beliefs that we have about dieting culture. And last but not the least, um accessibility and practicality. Since the um since the uh research congress will be done online it will be more practical since uh i personally have do not need to go to face to face since it will be conducted on an online setting next the preliminary parts of the journal article this part for me is still in the works and in progress so for now let's head uh for the Artwork production. Here are the three spreads that I currently have. The first one in the foremost left are or is the cover page of or will be the cover page of the zine and the two middle and the far right is some of the spreads that are or that will be inside the zine. Here is a brief time lapse of the uh, drawing that I did for the first page, for the cover page of the scene. Next, uh, I'll be talking about the, the challenges that I encountered and the collaborative approaches. So for the time, uh, for the challenges, um, the first one is the time management. I uh, had the hard time of doing and revising my works because of the time constraint for me and um the busy schedule that and the classing the clashing schedule with other uh, works or in other subjects next is the number of respondents um i had a hard time looking for um interviewees specifically women who were um around 16 or 19 to 20 years old and last but not the least i had a hard time in doing the zine pro production itself um i had a hard time since i did not uh even though i did or i have an idea i needed it to be more research based Next is my response. So first, I as uh, response time management, I did, uh, I 
thought that I should have a more flexible schedule and I should first um, tackle the important stuff of first revising my paper and then um, going for the uh, art production and out oh, not first the art production but first the data gathering then the um, art production next the quality over quantity so even though I uh, only had eight respondents I thought that their the quality of the responses matter more over how many people are there that, that did for my interview. And last but not the least, reference artworks and art studies. So to motivate me more on doing the uh, scene production, I researched more and added more reference artworks and art studies. So last, we have the timetable. So here is again chart for the uh, my plans for the next step. So it is pretty straightforward since as I said before, I'm plan I'm planning on submitting my paper to research to the research congress. And uh, by the second week of the third term, I should be done with the journal article revisions if there are some and the production or the continuation of the zine making and and by that time or the second week i should also be finished with the manuscript i should complete all of those since the deadline for uh, the submission is or will be on the second week of um the term a third term after that i will first await the uh if i will get accepted and then on week four to week seven i will have time to prepare for the uh, research congress and on the week eight or the last um last week of june will be the presentation or the research congress itself so that's all for my presentation thank you for listening Hello, I'm Kai Sofia. The artwork that is displayed on the screen is about the field views voting procedure that how the voters gone through with a heart of loving to be a voter, just to voice out the things that wanting to select and the love towards the country. Through the process of the journey in the situation of election, there are things that will met in the challenges. In the art piece, I have applied the concept idea of creating a good effect on the transition and the transformation of flag into papers where it have created an usual movement to display about the travelings that been in the loop. The following movement for the created is by the flag into a loop, creating a loop that showcasing the situation that encountered, which are doing research about the election details and will happening, and the second loop where meeting with people with different kind of perspective and opinions that may help through coming up new understanding or needing to be attentive or careful about the words that being tackled in the discussion. In the third loop, that have a smaller which things that just need some clarity and things that need to clear off to smooth out the encounter of the huge event that only occurred six years, which is the presidential election. In the Philippine flag, there is an two images that have inserted in the flag, which is the island map design and the carrying of, of the house by people. The design of the island is to show about what is the Philippine map and showcasing about the structure and the 
Carrying of the house is a traditional thing that Filipinos done in the past. The island present everything cannot be that presented is the island that fully showcases and can be missed out one because it will be Philippines. In the caring of house by other people means that there are having and caring heart that wanting to care, carry the house of other people and no matter what identity of theirs. The ending of the law is the paper that being answered by the voters that need to enter the present automated tally system which in short term is P-A-T-A-S. The design outside is the value and culture of the Filipinos that they have a kind of feeling in caring, loving, respect that making them want to food just to live a better future that they believe on. And that is which is gesture of Manopo. The two person wearing the tradition clothes, which is Barot Saya and Barong Tagalog, the two person have a gesture of seeing the Philippine Adam to present the emotion about the love for Philippines, and the man of Paul presented about the respect that they have in elders. In the final, and that after the voting, that they will have one stamp on the nail to know that they have accomplished the final end in the election 2022. Background is color green is because it have a symbolize of life and growth that been true in the journey. Through the setting up have done is starting with the sketching with different layers then do line art in one go and Coloring the base color, the, this color, same goes with the background. The both have included the texture, the lighting, shadowing, and refining as well as leaving the final touches. Thank you. So far, the majority of the revisions that were commented on by the advisors and panels were accomplished and implemented in the research paper. The most prominent change that has occurred is the methodology that we'll be using to gather the information needed. For example, our selection of participants for the interview is different from our initial plan and we had instead opted to choose a random woman from each strand of the grade 12 batch to interview and give her insights. The objectives or the statement of the problem of the research has also changed, as now we are not focusing on one specific beauty standard, rather we are now identifying what factors affect a person's personal beauty standard and how different beauty standards of the world and countries affect the Filipino beauty standard. Furthermore, our paper's RRL now have additional research and past studies about feminism and specifically uses the second wave of feminism as reference. Additionally, the research will now be submitted to the DLSU Senior High School Research Congress and we the researchers will be registering, so high hopes for that. God bless. As for the artwork production, we have already completed one out of three canvases. I myself started with the concept and sketch on an A3 sketch pad and had transferred to the canvas accordingly. Then Shaina would have started with the painting process, keeping in mind the basis and reference photos that I had used during the sketching process. As you can see, the artwork is a bit different from the original idea on which now we had used the interviewees as a muse, with proper consent of course and used their portrait on one side, while the other side was a woman of a country's beauty standard. In this case, for our first canvas, it was our friend and classmate Lin Ching of ADT12A, and on the other side is Irene from famous K-pop girl group Red Velvet, 
representing the Korean beauty standard, as she had mentioned this beauty standard in her interview. The challenge that we had encountered during this was that I myself was going out of the country for this month of April, so it was crucial that we finished all the interviews and data collection as soon as possible for the artwork. Though, sadly, we were not able to finish all interviews due to different strands, different available times and schedule, but we were lucky enough to get the information we needed to start and finish on one of the canvases before my departure. Another one of our challenges is that our times were clashing and we had difficulty finding the right time to consult with our research advisor, Sir Jeff. Additionally, me and my partner are also part of school organizations and extracurricular activities, so we had events that made us busy. It was very draining from being able to write and research for a study. And how we resolve these challenges is that me and my partner fixed our schedules and rested as much as we can so we have enough time and energy to complete the paper. We also communicated well with our research advisor, Sir Jeff, through the emails to submit our revisions and updates regarding the research. For our timetable, we had allotted the month of March for mostly paper revisions and really finalizing and narrowing down what our paper should be about and the concept. Since our main concept was slightly tweaked we had to make a lot of changes to the paper in terms of the rrl as well and the art making process and the art concept and as well as the methodology like I said before we had also allotted the month of march for data gathering and finalizing our interviewees our interview questions and really what we should ask the participants and we also gave out the consent forms and also our greetings to the participants and asked if they would like to participate. Luckily enough, most all of the participants agreed to this. And this is when we also started doing our interviews. For the month of April, we also mostly used that for art making processes and also finalizing the look of the artworks and the look of the final paintings. Good day to each and every one of you. I am Rina Annabel B. Kama, and here is my presentation on my study, Marahuyong Paglikha at Pagtuklas, an analysis on the perspectives of consumers and practitioners of traditional healing. Working on this output has been a very challenging and difficult task, but it has been a fulfilling and exciting journey. There were numerous obstacles along the way, but creating this study has provided me with new knowledge and insightful experiences. Before I show you my initial artwork, let me walk you through the modifications I did to my project. One of the revisions to my study was shifting the direction of my topic. Instead of promoting the practice of traditional healing, I would focus on addressing the misconceptions surrounding the subject. As for my study participants, I was advised to include practitioners as they could provide knowledge and the necessary information that will be critical in understanding the nature of their work. Due to the limitations, I could only interview one consumer and one practitioner of traditional healing. But I plan to interview a few more individuals to provide an accurate analysis of the subject. I encountered many challenges in the search for participants for my study, which is why I sought the help and advice of both my mother and grandmother who are researchers. As a result, I had to change the demographic of my participants as young adults who have had an experience with traditional healing was a scarce find. Without their help, I would not have been able to get to this point. Currently, I have finished creating one of my artworks and have the final or initial sketch of my next piece. In these next segments, I will show you snippets of my art making progress.
bringing this project to life was an arduous and time-consuming process. Here in this timetable, you will see the amount of time allotted to the creation of this output. My study is just one of the many projects that aim to make a difference in our society. However, I hope this presentation of mine has inspired you and provided you with new knowledge. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day ahead. Good day, I am Kara Arabella D. Avellino here to present a progress report for my study entitled Recreating Renaissance Paintings Through Photography in the Modern Filipino Context. To give a brief overview of my study, it mainly circulates on increasing art appreciation among the Filipino audience through revisiting the art of the past and incorporating it to what art is now at the present. Furthermore, the study brings light towards a more modern medium of art, which is photography, to promote not only traditional art, but also contemporary digital art. For this progress report video, it would be divided into four components, namely revision status and progress, uh, artwork production, challenges encountered and collaborative approaches, and lastly, it would be the timetable. So now let us proceed to the first component which is the revision status and progress report. In the previous term, during the initial defense, there were a lot of comments and suggestions that have been given by the panel which I now have taken into consideration this term, having them express their thoughts and opinions on the paper and the intended output has truly helped me gain a sense of perspective and clarity into what I should put out. With that being said, here are some of the things that were revised with the paper that also serves as the current progress for this term. So first would be the replacement for Vermeer's Girl with a Pearl Earring. So for the art production portion of my study last term one, I decided that I would be recreating three paintings, specifically the Girl with a Pearl Earring, Lady with an Ermine, and the Birth of Venus. However, it has been raised to me during panel defense that the Girl with a Pearl Earring is actually not from the Renaissance. Thus, I tried looking for a new painting to replace it with. This term, I have decided to replace it with the idealized portrait of a lady by Sandro Bodicelli and have done some further research on it. So second would be more depth in terms of creating an advocacy and purpose for the study. A concern raised to me was the depth of my study and my output. What is there more to just appreciating, appreciating art as a goal for my research. This is what I decided to work on as I was conceptualizing my outputs. To make the output and the study itself become more meaningful, I decided to have this goal of having people appreciate different kinds of art through the recreation of these Renaissance paintings. For instance, the modern version of the idealized portrait of a lady was inspired by Maria Makiling seeing as they are both mythological creatures. In showing this, I could encourage art appreciation in the form of Filipino literature transformed into an image. Third would be clarity and emphasis on Filipino aspects of the output. Another important comment from the panelists was to make the Filipino aspects of my output and study clearer. Furthermore, I was told that it would be best to ground my research to the Filipino audience. As a result, I have highlighted certain Filipino aspects and elements in recreating the Renaissance paintings, such as the context behind it and the props I use for the shooting. Furthermore, I have also added added one whole subtopic for the Filipino context in my related literature. So these are all the main revisions I have done for this term. However, some other mi minor ones include changing some of the theories for my study and revising other parts of the paper. 
For the data collection of my study, I have now gathered 51 respondents from two age groups, including people who are age 15 to 24 years old and 25 years old and above. In picking an academic journal that I intend to submit to, I have chosen Sinaya as I think it would be fit for my paper and it also gives me enough time to finish my output. So that is all for the revision status and progress report. Moving on, we have the second component, which is the artwork production. This term, I have done three mood, board, mood boards for each of the paintings to be translated into photographs. This would serve as a guide for when I'm gathering the props and shooting for the pictures. Furthermore, I have already done two shoots for one specific painting which is the idealized portrait of a lady. The first shoot I have done was for the modern version, whose subject is Maria Makiling, and for the second shoot was a similar take on Simonetta Vespucci. So here's a short uh, sped up video of me preparing and doing the shoot. <laughs> So that is all for the artwork production. Next, we have the challenges encountered and collaborative approaches. In my opinion, the most challenging part of practical research for this term is having to manage my time. Seeing as I am an irregular student, it is quite difficult for me to split my time for tasks. Furthermore, as I am in the IHL setup, it was challenging to do research alone given the time and condition for it. Some strategies or approaches in solving this problem were to set deadlines for myself and try to have some sort of progress every week even if it was just minor. So that is all for the challenges encountered. Finally, we have the timetable. So for the timetable, here is what I have planned out. Um, so here's here is what I have planned for the second term and also what I am planning to do for the third term. So first we have the revisions according to panelists last term one. This is already accomplished. The deadline was on February 28th. Next was the mood boards for each painting and preparation of props and costumes for the shoot. So it's already accomplished and that was um, uh, on March 31. And next it would be the two photo shoots for painting number one. It's already accomplished and that was done, uh, finished by April 2nd. And next would be the milestone presentation video, which is currently in progress. It's due on April 4. And next is the preliminary draft, which is in progress, which is due on April 12. So next would be my plans for the third term. So I would be continue with the continuing with the photo shoots. Uh, it hasn't been started, but the deadline would be on May 12. Uh, for the second photo shoot and for the last photo shoot would be uh, on May 19th and for analyzing of the data collection that was gathered it's not yet started but the deadline would be on May 26 and finally for the last one is the finalizing of our artwork and editing of the images it would be due on June 28th. It must be noted, however, that I would like to make a more detailed and specific timetable uh, that would be much more better than this one. So that is all for this progress report video. Thank you so much.
Hello and good day everyone, we are Matthew Arcal, Catherine Beck, and Summer Leoncho, and we are the researchers behind the research paper entitled Expressive Therapy, a Triptych Collage Depicting Family Culture in Relation to DLSU Senior High School Filipino Students' Mental Health. As such, we are excited to present our progress ma video milestone presentation. Family culture is a set of shared conventions, morals, codes, and traditions among members of a social group. Those who deviate from family culture may face cultural and family problems. This research will revolve around therapeutic art for the respondents to express and communicate their outlook on their family dynamic in a creative form. Furthermore, the proponents aim to evaluate how De La Salle University integrated senior high school students apply their cultural art in their everyday lives. There is a notable family culture within every household, and a selected individual from this group will showcase that culture through the form of arts with provided guidance. This research will be utilizing the emotionalism theory. This theory emphasizes an artwork's important characteristics, given that the most important aspect of an artwork is the vivid transmission of a heightened sense of sentiments, emotions, and understanding. The proposed artwork is a triptych collage. The art will contain symbolisms of how the mental health and well-being of the participants were affected by the family culture. At this current point in time, we have managed to accomplish chapters 1-3 to three of our research paper. Respectively, these are the problematic, the discourse, and the art concept. Our group has also successfully defended this paper during Term 1's proposal defense, scheduled last November 25, 2022. The group was invited to present at the 16th DLSU Art Congress, where they were able to discuss the revised paper on February 23, 2023. In regards to the data collection, the group has successfully distributed their Google Forms as planned and garnered a total of 36 respondents. The group proceeded to conduct interviews following this, having a current progress of 20 people interviewed, totaling of 60% of the artwork completed. The group is currently working on completing their artworks required by the end of the progress course. The group experienced multiple problems during the research timeline. With the research mentor, we were given formats and technicalities of the research a little last minute. With research members, a challenge was the fact that we had different learning modes. So say if we were to practice on campus, one member would not participate or would just be online. Deadlines and requirements were a challenge for us. This is due to a mixture of having one member be in a completely different learning mode than the rest, which made it difficult to schedule meetings where all members were present. Despite that, the scheduling and planning made it so that our groups handled the general situation well. This term's research paper faced several challenges, one of which was the requirement of the 80% of artwork to be completed. This was a significant obstacle for our group and caused us some concern as we were unsure if we would be able to meet the requirements while still creating a high-quality output. However, we were relieved to learn that the Arts and Design track batch had decided to lower the requirement percentage to 50% for this term. This decision has allowed us uh, more time to focus on creating quality output and refining our research paper. Another challenge we encountered within the group was miscommunication regarding the artwork, but we resolved this through a thorough discussion with all members present. Our current focus on the research paper is completing the artwork section. As previously mentioned, we have already completed 20 pieces of art which we are now in the process of cohesively arranging and organizing to ensure they flow seamlessly with the rest of the paper. This is a crucial aspect of the paper as the artwork supports the overall argument and findings of the research. Aside from the artwork, we are also actively editing the preliminary parts of the research journal article. These include the introduction, literature review, and methodology sections. These parts are essential to the research paper as they provide a framework for the overall argument, contextualize the study with the broader academic discourses, and explain the research methods employed. In editing these sections, we focus on ensuring they are clear, concise, and well-organized. We want to ensure that the introduction clearly outlines the research problem and objectives, while the literature review effectively summarizes the existing literature and identifies gaps in the current research. 
Additionally, the methodology section must be detailed enough to provide readers with a clear understanding of the research methods employed, but not so technical as, in, as to be inaccessible to non-expert readers. Our group's progress on the research paper has been very encouraging as we were pleased to report that we have completed more than 50% of the required percentage of the artwork. This is a significant achievement as the artwork is a crucial component of our paper and we want to ensure that it is both visually engaging and supports the overall argument of our research paper. Moreover, we are thrilled to announce that our group has been accepted to present our artwork at the 16th DLSU Art Congress which is a massive milestone for us. This opportunity is a testament to our group's hard work and dedication to this project, and we are motivated to continue producing high quality work. We recognize that presenting our artwork on the DLSU Arts Congress is an excellent opportunity to showcase our research to a broader audience. Thus, we have been working diligently to ensure that our artwork is visually compelling and communicates our research findings effectively. In addition to the Arts Congress, we are also planning to submit our research to the Research Congress. We firmly believe that our research can contribute significantly to the academic community and help millions of people in the Philippines and worldwide. By submitting our paper to the Research Congress, we hope to bring greater attention to the issues we have identified in our research and foster discussion and collaboration with other researchers on the field. We believe that our paper's potential impact extends far beyond the academic community and could ultimately contribute to positive societal changes. Overall, our group is excited about our progress so far, and we are committed to producing a high-quality paper that can be, have a meaningful contribution to the academic community and beyond. As we near the end of turn two, the group created a timeline noting the important dates with regards to the progress made on this research. Additionally, included here is our plan for the following term. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation. We hope that you have learned a lot about the progress we have made throughout term two. Hi, it's me, Sophia Cordelia of ADT12B, and this is my milestone video presentation. Progress report. So, so an important detail in my progress report would be the interviewing and data gathering part of everything. So, I had two interviewees, Alisa Angaid and Jeff Gallardo of Hands On Manila. So, for Alisa Angaid, I got to collect answers from her and she really answered my questions really well very useful as for sir jeff gallardo of hands on manila it took quite a while to be able to interview him because i would email him and he'd email me like weeks after but then after like almost a month of getting in contact with him i finally got to interview him and he answered my questions really well so that's really good progress for my paper for my artwork production, I got to collect all the materials I need except for the tires. I am still on the hunt for that. I got to collect balik bayan boxes, PVC pipes, and plastic bottles which are staple materials to my sculpture. So I did the collection of materials starting from starting term one actually and i think it is enough to complete my sculpture i actually did not get to start yet with my with the actual sculpture because of some reasons which i will be telling you in a bit of course with everything in hand there will always be problems that one will encounter and here are some of the problems i have encountered so the first problem would be the data collection which was about 
the the schedules of me and the interviewee not aligning but luckily i got to solve that the main problem and challenge that i am encountering is actually the term break so i did not start on my artwork because i was afraid of artist block and the reason is because for every term break which is almost a month long I go back here to Cebu. So I was thinking that if I started on my artwork before I go to Cebu and then I'm gone for a month and then I come back to start on it again, I might lose the motivation to do so. So instead, I made sketches like instructions on how to create my artwork so that once I come back to Manila, I'll have an idea of where to start, what to do, and how to create my artwork. So that's that for my challenges and that's how I solved them and how I came to a conclusion and a solution. Now, a timetable of what I'm going to do. So I am planning to travel back to Manila around May 1st so that for the whole week until May 8, I will at least get the pedestal of my sculpture done. So for that whole week, I will be working on the pedestal. And then after that, I think it will take me at most three weeks to complete my artwork. I hope I do not go over three weeks. And then while in break, I will be working on revising my paper and stuff like that for the Sinaya journal because I need to pass that as well actually and get it done so I can completely focus on my artwork. So that's that. And that ends my milestone video presentation. I hope you enjoyed it as well as the cinematic videos that I took because I felt like it. I hope you enjoyed it as well as the videos I took on the plane because the sun was just, the sun was so beautiful in the plane. And yeah, I hope this milestone video presentation answered all the questions that I needed to answer. So yeah, thanks for watching. I'm Zoe Alcantara, and this is my milestone presentation of my research, which is entitled The Visualization of the Youth Romanticizing Toxic Relationship in TikTok Through a Mixed Media Sculpture. My presentation will follow the sequence, their vision status and progress a part of my research, the artwork production, the challenges I've encountered, and lastly, the timetable of my research project. So, I made a list for the revision that I need to do on my research based on the comments, suggestions, and recommendations given by the panelists of my proposal defense last term. First comment is that I need to define youth better, which I now did. I added an age range of the youth I'm researching about in the scope and limitation part of my manuscript, which is ages 15 to 24 years old basing it on the UN age range of the youth. Second is to add reason or explain on why I decided to use the stated hashtags for my data collection. I added it to the methodology part of my manuscript stating that the hashtag were chosen as they are the recurring hashtag you would see when you continuously view videos about toxic relationship on TikTok. Third is to add more details with regards to the TikTok application and its users. For example, how they interact with the trans and such. I added more details regarding it on the RRL of my manuscript, 
it explains how videos gain popularity and application, its algorithm, and how it can reach wider audience outside the application itself. Another comment is that minor polishing with the research question 1 and 2 to make it more cohesive, which I change it into how do the continuous exposure of toxic relationship videos in TikTok can influence the romantic beliefs of youth, and the second is that how the TikTok trends reframes the negative behaviors of a toxic relationship. And as for the artwork part of my research, they suggest to make it interactive or think of an idea that could elevate the sculpture such as adding background sounds from the TikTok videos I've analyzed to improve the purpose of my art piece better. Though I did consider it, my research advisor and I have concluded that I can add other details as I think it doesn't really go along with the aesthetic concept of my sculpture. However, I did add another aspect onto it. Rather than sense of hearing, I decided to make my sculpture an olfactory art which stimulate people's sense of smell by adding fragrance into my sculpture. The reason I added it is it correlates with how toxic relationships work. It also goes along with my concept as the main piece of my sculpture is a clay sculpture of a toxic flower that has an intoxicating scent. And the other reason will be explained more on the manuscript. Thus, the general status of my research is that I'm in the process of revising the grammar of my methodology, tapping the result and discussion of my paper, and creating my sculpture. I've also decided to pass my manuscript to Dell as a senior high school research congress as it suits my research which is about the youth and goes along with one of their theme of negotiating existing norms, beliefs, and values towards a more sustainable society. Based on the video that you've been watching, I've now finished two out of three of my sculptural pieces which is the display glass and the decor for it. At first, I was planning to make a filigree for the decor in my display glass. However, I could not find a wire that could fit the visual look of my display glass, therefore I decided to just polish the pattern I've already created last term and let the cutting machine do its work. Aside from that, another challenge I've encountered is the slow data collection in TikTok videos. My initial plan of co only collecting videos from local creators were changed into half local and half foreign videos in order to avoid backlogs in my to-do list for this research. Lastly, this is my timetable for Term 2 up to Term 3. As you can see, my Term 2 goals is to finish all of my process which are data gathering, data analysis, writing the result and discussion of my paper, and accomplishing and assembling my sculptural pieces together. So that in Term 3, I just need to edit the overall manuscript such as the format, spellings, grammar, and the citation I've used in my paper. Currently, I could say that I'm still following along with the timetable I've shown and hopefully be able to follow it until I finish my research. And that's the end of my milestone presentation regarding my research, the visualization of the youth, romanticizing toxic relationship and TikTok, through a mixed media sculpture. Thank you. Good day, I'm Crystal Adami, and this is my milestone presentation of my research that is entitled Tangkilikin ang Sariling Atin Presence of Colonial Mentality Among Filipinos Today. Looking at the current situation, Colonial mentality is one of the common social phenomena observable among Filipinos. Colonial mentality refers to when Filipinos have more preference towards Western or foreign cultures and products compared to Philippine culture and local products. Deemed as a result of a long-term colonial history in the Philippines, Internalized oppression and a feeling of inferiority for one's self-cultural identity have become prevalent. This mindset would negatively affect a Filipino's sense of self-identity. My research study aims to seek the particular effects of the currently existing colonial mentality and enlighten people about its presence. The three artworks that I will be creating are to let people be aware of its social issue 
and inspired them to have more nationalistic mentality about their cultural identity. Currently, I am in the process of revising parts of my research paper based on the comments and suggestions of my panelists from last term's proposal defense. As for the artwork, I am working on my first painting which is about skin color hierarchy. Presently, my painting is still unfinished. However, it is almost complete as the remaining part left to be painted are the skin whitening products that will be painted at the bottom part of the canvas. While creating my artwork, there were some challenges I encountered when using watercolor such as applying too much water which causes the water to look too light and washed out and also painting on an area that is not yet completely dry before adding a glaze over it which can risk disrupting the paint underneath as it can quickly re-liquefy. Lastly, here is my timeline for this term 2 until term 3. My plan of tasks to be done within term 2 is to revise my research paper, make new art drafts as shown previously that one of my panelists suggested that I change the art style, data gathering, writing of results and discussion, finish the first painting, and then start on the second painting that is about patronage of foreign culture. And in the next term, I will be continuing and finishing my second painting as well as the third painting about desire for immigration. Then, after completing my artworks, I will finalize my research paper. And that's the end of my milestone presentation. Thank you. Hello everyone, I am Jeremy Lim and this is a progress report video on my research titled Simbahang Kay Kulay, Interpreting Religious Structures in the Vicinity of Intramuros in a Fauvist Manner. First part, the revision status of the research paper. For chapter 1, I have added extra information to the background of my research, especially about what triggered me to research this topic. The research questions have also been revised. Moving on to chapter 2, I have made some changes to this chapter, especially the literature review, proofreading the paragraphs and adding necessary information that is lacking. I also summarized each topic and subtopic in the RRL for the preliminary parts of the research paper. Moreover, I have changed the medium and technique from gouache to using innovative materials, for stained glass for San Agustin Church, and caustic or wax painting for uh, Manila Cathedral and paper mosaic for Milonto Church. Lastly, I added survey to the methodology section of the paper as a form of data gathering. Moving on, there have been slight changes made to chapter 3. 
The art making process has been changed from the process of gouache to that of different media and materials uh, for stained glass, encaustic painting, and paper mosaic, as mentioned in chapter 2. I have also added survey ethics to the ethical considerations section of chapter 3. Lastly, I have attached the color palette, the sketches, and the prototypes that I have made and some art studies. Moving on, I have made a new chapter 4 in the paper dedicated to the data, data gathering and analysis part of the research. Although there's not much information written there yet as I'm not yet done with the data gathering. The preliminary parts of the research paper is still in the works as I am still finishing my data gathering. Furthermore, most of the revisions that I have made here were taken from the panel's feedback from last term's defense. Here is an image of the comments and I have chosen to submit my paper to the Arts Congress since I have been accepted into the Congress and got to present my research there. The second part, artwork production. I have since changed my artwork medium from gouache to three different innovative materials. For the paper mosaic, I have made a prototype from pieces of colored paper and have also experimented with the final colors for the papers that are going to be used. I am quote-unquote assembling the pieces of paper of different colors to form the paper mosaic. For the encaustic painting, I have made a simple prototype by mixing beeswax, castor wax, and some pigment. The color of the paint, however, was too light and so I will make another prototype again uh, once I have gotten the pre-made encaustic medium that I bought. For the faux stained glass, I have made an initial prototype using markers on this on illustration board to test some colors and the overall look of the artwork. For outlining the artwork panel, black glue was made by mixing black paint and clear glue. However, I am still waiting for the acrylic panel to arrive for me to be able to continue finishing the artwork. Furthermore, I will be making sure that all of the artworks will follow the requirements stated in the artwork production matrix especially the dimensions, which are 20 by 30 inches. The third part of the video, challenges encountered in collaborative approaches. First, there was some difficulty in finding respondents for the data gathering, especially because part of my target audience is in the age range of 30 and above, and I need at least around 8 respondents from each age range for my survey. As a solution to this problem, I tried to disseminate my survey to a wider audience. Second, in the art making process, for the paper mosaic, one of the major problems is the paper's colors not being completely similar to the ones in the color palette. To resolve this, I have thought of dyeing the papers with pigment or paint that has been mixed to look exactly like the colors in the color palette. For the encaustic painting, there was a problem in making the encaustic medium at home. What I did was mix the beeswax and castor wax and then add the color pigment. The end result of the paint was that the color was too light and the paint hardened very quickly, even on the brush. With this, I have opted for a pre-made encaustic medium and then I will experiment again with the formula to make the encaustic paint. For the faux stained glass, there was a hard time finding a good quality acrylic panel that fitted the minimum size requirement of 20 by 30 inches. With this, I have asked a close friend of mine to help me find and buy the said material. And now the third, there weren't many problems encountered with writing the research paper aside from the data gathering portion of the paper and finding reliable sources for the RRL. 
To find more reliable journals, I have allotted more time to doing them so that I can better back up my paper, especially the RRL portion of my research. Here is a brief overview of the timetable. Note that it is subject to change depending on how early or later I would be able to finish the said tasks. That is all for this video and thank you for watching.